Welcome to the Top Gun Flight Academy. Only the very best of the Innisfear pilots will get to fly in our fighters. So what we're going to do today is we're going to have a look at how to fly aerospace, how to fly stick in Battletech using Mega Mech. And what we're going to do is we're going to load up a really big map. And it's really important when you're playing Battletech using Aerotech is to use a big map because if you fly over a really small map it can, you can just fly off the map really quickly so I've chosen a big 4x4 four four map here, 4 map sheets by 4 map sheets now you can, there are some cheats to get around this and what you can do is you can go to the game options and you can go to the aerospace rules here and we've got an option, first of all we've got to allow aerospace units on ground maps, that's by default okay but there is an aerospace option here that enables you, if I can remember where it is I can search for it, just type in fly off okay so if you go off the map it enables you to come straight back on allow return flyovers so if you go off the map there, you can basically just get an option to fly back onto the map and that way you won't just accidentally fly your ace fighter out of the uh, out of the battle. So let's lock that in and let's pick ourselves a top gun fighter. Now there are two types of fighters in aerotech. There are uh, conventional fighters and aerospace fighters. Conventional fighters are limited to atmosphere only and aerospace can fly in space. We're going to just look at atmosphere and I'm going to choose a 3025 Classic. I'm going to choose the Corsair. 50 tons, two mediums, two larges, four small lasers. We're going to go for the Corsair CSR V12. First, I'm going to choose off mech and choose onto aerospace. Aerospace fighter and choose the V12. Okay, there we go. So, a few things to look at in the startup screen. We've got our typical deployment, we've also got in deployment, we've got starting velocity starting altitude. Now you don't have to start the starting velocity at zero, you could start it at higher numbers, it doesn't really matter. Starting at zero doesn't mean you're automatically going to crash, that's fine. Uh, starting altitude is quite important, so I'm going to stick the starting altitude up at just at 10, let's keep it at 5 to start off with and we'll show what happens when we go up to 10 in a minute. There are 10 maximum altitudes and again don't get confused between altitudes and levels. Levels and altitudes or height and altitudes aren't the same thing. So in Battletech you have uh, 10 altitude levels going from 1 which is like up to 50 meters which is nape of the earth flying up until level 10 which is much higher. I can't remember how high now level 10 is. Well level 10 apparently is supposed to be 5,000 meters. It doesn't actually quite work that way. The scales are a bit off and I'll talk about that later but you can go up to 10 altitude. We can even in here pick to have a bomb. Okay, so I'm going to go for a couple of high explosive bombs here. Now, putting bombs on your uh, aerospace fighter can reduce the um, speed of the aerospace fighter. So you've got a maximum number here you can take how many it allow me to take? Let's take two. And if I take two, if it will tell me the uh, the amount it's reduced the yeah, stats by, I have to look up exactly how much it reduces the stats by. But it reduces the uh, safe the uh, the thrust speed by a little bit if you have a heavily loaded fighter. So it still says I've got movement uh, six nine. If I go and take more bombs, will it reduce that, let's have a look uh, 
count still comes up six times. So let's just put that down to, let's put it to six. You can have high explosive bombs, cluster bombs, lazy guided, tag, uh, and even rocket pods. A whole variety of different things here, even arrow four. So let's add some more position. I'm going to add someone to shoot at. Let's go for a Wolverine. So we've got a Wolverine. Let's go for a classic 6K. So this Wolverine has got, and this is going to be quite important later, it's got a large laser, it's got a medium laser, small laser, SRM. So at range 10, it can hit me the large laser. At range 16, it's out of range of everything. That's going to be quite important. I want to. Okay, we're ready to go. So I've got my map. Let's give this uh, Wolverine to Princess. Uh, let's add a bot. Change owner. There we go. Right. So I'm going to launch into the game and then we'll start giving you some flight score. So we're going to deploy somewhere onto the map here. See if we can find our target. There are also some uh, tankers here, some fuel tankers. Oh, he's all the way over there. There are some fuel tankers here which can be flown over and detonated. So we'll get a chance to have a look at that. So let's start off with the basics. Uh, on the display here, you've got five, which is the altitude. A for aerospace, I think. So five is the altitude. And then as we move, we're going to get different uh, effects here. Now, we can't actually move at the moment here. We've got, you click, we've got gray. That means there's no thrust. So we're at velocity zero. So the first thing we need to do is we need to hit the accelerate button. So every time we hit accelerate, it gives us one thrust point. So, and that adds to one to velocity. So I'm going to accelerate by two. Now, on the low altitude map, one thrust point gives you 16 points of movement. That's a huge amount of movement. So 16 points of movement. Now, it actually doesn't really matter how fast you move in Aerotech because you actually, your opponent doesn't get any modifiers to shoot you based on your movement modifiers. I'm not really sure what that is, maybe it'd make it too powerful, but you actually aren't affected, your opponents aren't affected by their movement modifiers. So it's uh, not based on that. So we're gonna, gonna accelerate to two. And now when I start moving, uh, and you always should do that first. So if I just click escape, I'm gonna click accelerate and accelerate. The first button here, the first uh, number here is your number of thrust points available. Second number here is your altitude. Remember, altitude is not height, so I can fly over anything, even a pipe 10 with an altitude 5, because altitude 5 is apparently 250 meters. Okay, so as I move along, you can see there are different numbers here. At the top right-hand corner, you've got a red number, which is saying that's bad, red is bad, that that's the number of hexes, bef uh, sorry, that's the number of hexes I've moved, and uh, if it goes yellow, it means I can turn by spending a thrust point. If it goes green, it means I can turn without spending a thrust point because conventional fighters and aerospace fighters can turn in atmosphere without spending thrust points. The second number is the total number of movement points. So I've got two out of 32 movement. So that's quite useful when planning your flight path. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to aim for one of these tankers here. So, here we go, I'm counting up, and something will happen when I get to 8. So when I get to 8 here, it's going to let me uh, do a turn, and that turn would cost me a, a, a frost point. And I can spend up to 6 frost points in a turn, 
but I am limited the number of frost points I can spend for turning, I think, to one. So, it's also useful when you're kind of doing this to actually have a copy of Total War around, and I'm going to talk about this in a minute. The actual thing that is, this is based on is a, is a table on page 92, which is straight movement on ground, uh, maps table. And you can see that uh, a fighter can move eight hexes before it can turn. So the minimum straight move it can move is that actually you need to move 12, eight hexes at velocity one and 12 hexes for velocity two. So if I could go up to 12 hexes, it should go green. So eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and it's gone green. So at this point now, I can turn uh, at any point for free in one hex facing, only one hex facing. There are maneuvers that you can get to turn more, but we'll look at those later. So now I can turn freely. I'm going to carry on. So I'm over this. Now, to shoot at something, you need to actually pass over it, unless it's an aerospace fighter. So to shoot a ground target, you need to fly over it. So I'm going to fly over this. And you can see again, I'm now back in the red because I need to move another at least eight before I can turn. There you go, I've moved eight. I can now turn freely with a frost point. So I'm gonna turn with a frost point. And carry on moving. Okay. So that's completed my movement. I've got 32 out of 33, out of 32 out of 32 and that's like up the up green to say my movement's complete. If you press escape to clear this, you have to go all the way back to the beginning. So it can be a bit fiddly if you get something wrong. So if you press escape, you'll go back to the beginning of the whole process. So I've done my movement then, I've done all my turning. If you don't spend all 32 movement points, or all of your movement points that are available to you, it won't let you. It'll come up for warning that you have not expended all frost points. And I'll show you that in a minute, at which point you won't be able to proceed. So you have to fly at your speed that's provided. You can't not, not fulfill all those points, unlike movement of, say, a battle mech. So here we go. We've completed this movement. I'm gonna hit move. Now one of the really useful things about uh, aerospace is they actually give you a nice overlay to show where you've gone. Now that's important because when you're targeted by enemies they can pick points along this path to shoot you. And you can see I've passed over my target here. Now there are two types of attack you can do in, um, in aerospace, so three types. The first type is called strike and strike you can do at any target when you that you pass over when you are at altitude five or less. And you can see if I click on my fuel tank here and select it, you gave me the option C to, to click myself, but I can basically target, you can be targeted at any point along your path. And we're gonna choose to fire some weapons here. Now, ranges when attacking ground targets are basically, you can shoot anything, okay, so if you pass over it. So because they're aerospace ranges, I can even fire a small laser at a ground target. My hit value is two because that target's not moving, it's minus four, so it's quite good to hit uh, stationary targets with these. And I'm gonna fire, let's fire off just a couple of large lasers. Okay, so I'm gonna basically, I've got that selected, I've got my target. You can see the ranges here, but that ranges only applies to the number of hexes not when you're flying over something, you just basically, you, you, you can basically just shoot uh, straight down and get and get them without any range. So even, even the small lasers will be able to hit that, even though I'm at effectively altitude five. Um, altitude five, by the way, is, is treated as uh, 10 hexes away for range, and we'll look at that in a minute. So I'm gonna click on fire, fire, and I'm just gonna click done in a minute. Now we might get the uh, Wolverine shooting at me, in which case the Wolverine is going to be shooting at long range for its medium uh, for its uh, medium weapons and then uh, it's going to be firing at medium range for a large laser. 
and its modifiers are not going to be affected by my movement and only be affected by its movement and affected by um, my flight path. If it's shooting me side on then it gets a slightly easier to hit number um, so if it's if it's shooting from the rear it's zero if you're shooting side on it's plus one if it's shooting uh, while you're coming directly towards it with your nose I think it gets a plus two so I'm going to click done and here we go got hit hit and okay done it 16 points of damage now you might notice that I've lost one point of altitude and that's because whenever you do a strike mission it costs you one point of altitude that's going to be quite important in a minute altitude is life in aerospace okay so now we're going to try the other type of flight we're going to try to do a uh, what we call a strafe run now strafing has to be done from um, free height so we've got to go down by one so we're going to hit the, the decelerate button before we do that let's have a look at our velocity now I put two points into velocity so my velocity should be two but now it's one the reason why is because at the end of every turn you lose one point of velocity if you end the turn at zero then you stall the next turn because you effectively go to minus one so I've got one velocity left so I'm going to speed up one okay to give me one extra speed and it shows me here or if I actually go down rather than accelerate and go down by one two it actually gives me points of thrust for going down so if you basically decelerate you get a free point of velocity so if you go down by two so you get a free point of velocity so you can see it's up to 32 so I'll do that again if I do it here I'm on 16 if I go down 1 then it's still 16 but if you go down 2 then it goes up to 32 so it's a quick way of getting some thrust points so now velocity now is going to be 2 because I've added 1 to the velocity by going down two levels so I'm moving along and it's green now so I can I can turn I'm going to cross over the uh, target here and I'm going to start making my way back and you have to plan ahead in aerospace you have to plan ahead to think where am I going to want to end up so here we go Six. I'm on yellow. I could try turning again, but what will happen is it won't let me because I've already spent one thrust point to turn. But I'm green now, so I can turn freely. Up to 32. So I've expended all my thrust points. I've gone down to altitude levels, and now I can click move. Okay. Oh. The Wolverine has waded into the water and then fallen over. <laughs> oh dear. Okay, so you can see it's got a nice little animation as it flies over. You can see I've flown over this fuel tank here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click strafe. Now strafe only appears if you're altitude free. So I'm going to click strafe and you count as altitude lower as soon as you're at the beginning of the movement. So I'm going to pick five hexes in a row and they have to be all consecutive and there has to be five and you have to double click on the hexes and you get this yellow now when you strafe there's actually a plus four to hit but every single hex gets attacked now all strafing weapons have to be direct fire weapons you can direct fire with ballistic or laser but not missiles 
so you can't strafe with missile weapons. So no SRM or LRM strafing. But you can strafe with PPCs, with launch lasers, with auto cannons. And every single target in that path, if there were three or four mechs, would get would get attacked. So including the hexes. So I've clicked on strafe, and I now need to click on the once you've clicked on strafe first, you have to do that first, you can then click on the weapons you want to include in the strafe. So let's go for the medium lasers and the small lasers. I don't want to overheat because overheating in aerospace is really, really bad. Okay. Click on fire. Okay. So it doesn't allow me to select the uh, small laser to the aft because you can only strafe weapons on your wings or nose, not on the two small lasers on the aft. So that's uh, let's add ooh, that's six heat. I've got six, eight heat left. So let's add a large laser as well. There we go. And you can see it's actually putting my attack arrow into all of those as I go across. And there we go, I'm attacking the ground, which is basically zero. And I can attack the fuel tank, which is on the second hex. It does it, does it by weapon. So you've got the light fuel tank is attacked, absorbs five points of damage. And there we go. So they all hit except for one of the, and even the small lasers. Oh no, one small laser missed, there we go. So you can see the target number needed was four. That's because I needed a base target number of four minus four because it was um, a mobile target and then plus four because it's strafing. Let's have a go hunting down this wall right now. So showing you how to do a strafe attack, how to do a strike attack and now we're going to have a go at trying to attack a live target here. And you can see this guy's at depth uh, one, he's not prone, so we should be able to fly straight over him. And I can first check my velocity on velocity one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop one level. Now, the reason I'm going to do that is because uh, nape of earth flying gives a plus three to hit for all other targets. Now there isn't any other targets here, but say for instance I had other targets on the board, while you're at altitude one, everything else shooting at you, except for the things you pass over and the things in, within one hex of what you pass over, get a plus three. Um, ta targets that are in your path, they get no modifier, and targets that are um, and, and targets that are adjacent get a plus one to hit. But targets that are less than adjacent they get a plus three to hit. So it's quite it's a way of helping you stay a bit safer. So I'm going to hit one extra point of acceleration. You've got to do acceleration first, so click accelerate first. Then I'm going to go down one, and then we're off. Now at this point I'm only at range when I pass over the Wolverine, I'm only going to be at range two because um, altitude 1 basically equates to range 2, you just double the altitude and that tells you what range you are from your attacker. And you can see I've green now so I can turn freely. Now I'm probably going to get scorched a bit by this because that Wolverine has got quite a lot of weaponry but that will get a chance to see what happens. And it's gone green again so I'm going to start circling around. There we go. Okay, so I've selected my movement, I've gone down to Nape of the Earth Flying, and I'm going to move. Okay. I don't know what that Wolverine's doing, but it stood up. So now I can choose what firing I'm going to do. I can do strafe or I can do strike, and in this case, uh, I can't do strike, and you can't do strike if you're doing nape of the earth flying. So nape of the earth stops you from doing strike missions. 
you have to be at altitude two, between two and five to do a strike mission. You can't do a strike mission if you're at altitude one. So if I go to target this guy first. Now I could use bombs here, yeah, but I'm going to just target it normally. And I'm going to click on strafe. Because as you can see, I can't actually target. This is impossible at the moment. So I'm going to click on strafe. And it doesn't matter what hexes I choose, as long as one of them includes the Wolverine. And let's go for the same things we went for last time. So I've got to click on strafe first, then I can click on fire. You can't click on fire, then strafe. There we go. Right, we're ready to shoot. Okay. So there's my firing first. I needed a 10, so the reason I needed a 10 is I needed a, uh, a base target number of 4, plus 4 for strafing. Um, needed a um, 8, and then plus 2 because of the Wolverine's movement, I think. Uh, or plus 1 for the Wolverine's partial cover, anyway. What movement modifier? Did it have a movement modifier? Let's have a look. What movement modifier did it have? I can't tell. So. But you, you need a uh, base target number four, plus four for strafing, and then other modifiers based on the target. So strafing can be quite hard at times, especially when you're shooting at targets that are moving around. It needs quite a high target number, so I've missed all of those. Now, interesting, the Wolverine didn't fire back at me though. Don't know why. So let's go from again. So this time I'm going to turn and give myself three points of movement this time. Now, this is a problem of giving yourself too much movement because now I'm at acceleration two thrust points, which means velocity three. And when you're at velocity three, you can only turn every 16. So if you go too fast on an aerospace map, you can basically end up flying off. So actually that's really too fast because I cannot turn until I get to 16. I can turn now because I've got uh, yellow so I'm going to turn now and you see I can go I can go to 8. What happens if I try and click here? Okay it now is making me make a control roll if I do that. So when I'm going to yellow it's becoming unsafe. So let's see what happens when I do that. So let's go So I've spent um, here two frost points, I had to spend two extra frost points to turn, and here I've spent two extra frost points to turn to there. So if I've spent two frost points to start off with, two frost points to turn, two frost points to turn here, and now I try and turn again using frost points, it worked at me. So I can only do that twice, once, twice. So. instead of accelerating that much, let's just accelerate by one. So we can turn at a reasonable rate. And again, it doesn't matter how fast you're going because they're still going to be at the same target and they hit you. While I'm flying around at the nape of the earth, that uh, Wolverine's going to have a plus three to hit me. And I've spent all my movement there. It takes a while to fly around. So this has got a movement of six nine, so uh, it can move up to nine thrust points. Now I can't actually target that because I'm not flying over it, so you can see it just comes up impossible.
Okay, so let's try hitting the uh, Wolverine with a strike mission. And first of all, I need to go up. So when you hit go up, it's going to cost your frost point. It's going to cost two frost points, sorry. So two frost points to go up by one. Let's go up again. And let's go up again. So I've spent six frost points there. I've got three left. And ideally I want to get to fire. Sometimes it's a bit difficult to maneuver this to get the right place. So you can see I could turn actually if I was green there because I've spent frost I've spent several frost points, so I've actually got frost points to spend by turning. because uh, that's green. So let's do that, accelerate once. Accelerate once, accelerate twice, go up once, go up twice, move forward two. Now it won't let me do that. So I'm just gonna hit go up, go up. And I've only got 16 movement points because I'm at velocity one. But because I've spent those frost points, it's giving me that. Uh, opportunity to change direction. So I'm going to fly straight over the Wolverine again, and this time I'm going to hit it with a strike mission. And I'm going to turn and go this way. And it's greyed out because I've run out of uh, movement points. So, hit move. Now let's have a go at shooting him. So I'm going to hit on the strike option. So there is an option for strike, so you just basically click on the target, go to target, Wolverine, and I'm just going to hit it with the uh, large lasers. Now at this point, it's going to be quite easy for him to hit me because I'm coming nose on, so he gets plus two for me being nose on, and then he just needs a four plus his movement and he, he walks, that's just a five. And then he also is at range three times two, so he's at range six. So he's gonna be at medium range for everything. So he's gonna be a plus two. So he's gonna need a four, five, six, seven, and then eight, nine for me flying straight onto him. Hopefully, I've worked out the maths correctly. So it's going to click done, so we find everything. There we go. So both missed. I only needed uh, to hit. Uh, this is the weapons fire for the Wolverine. The Wolverine needed a seven. Okay. Uh, I don't know why you need nine. Um, what the reason is, I'm not sure there. So you needed. Fours, he needed uh, fives for um, walking, and then six sevens for range, maybe. Um, and then I needed uh, to hit just with sixes because I need fours plus. Oh, and strike missions always get a plus two to hit, so I needed six, and the Wolverine didn't get a movement modifier. Let's try something a little bit different here. We're going to try and maneuver. So the maneuvers are down here. Now to really understand the maneuvers, you really do have to have a look at the um, uh, at the actual uh, book because the book really does explain exactly what maneuver does, and Mega Mech doesn't really do that. So if you look on page 85 of the last version of Total Warfare, you've got the different maneuvers here. Now loops really hard to do because you've got to be at velocity 4 to do it, but that allows you to loop the loop. Uh, the Imalan is the one that's really useful because the unit gains 2 altitude and ends on the manoeuvre facing any hex side and the velocity drops by 2. 
So we're going to try that. Okay, and that's got a minimum velocity of three. So actually, I can't attempt that because I need a minimum velocity of three. I think the hammerhead is the one that you can do. The unit remains in the hex it started, but changes 180 degrees. And that is quite hard to do because it's a control modifier of POS3. So we're going to see if we can do that successfully. Now this could end really badly. I could just crash and uh, that's a bit of a risk. Um, so I'm going to try getting some extra uh, altitude first. If you fail a control row, and we'll see that in a minute, you actually lose 1d6 levels of um, height. And you have to carry on in the same direction you've traveled, which could mean you fly off the map. So we're gonna go for acceler uh, gonna go for go up. Should we go for accelerate first? We'll go for accelerate first. Gonna hit accelerate twice. Gonna click on go up. You can go up three times, so hit accelerate twice. You can't um, go down more than two in one in one turn because otherwise it will um, be uncontrolled. So you can only go down by two in one level, otherwise you have to make a control roll or crash, same as we did in the dropship. So now I've um, spent two points of acceleration and I've gone up and I'm just gonna hit now the maneuver. Let's see if this works. They're quite difficult to pull off these maneuvers. So I'm gonna hit the hammerhead maneuver, click OK, select a new direction of movement and it should work. Is it going to let me move it? No. I always find the implementation of these maneuvers to be quite tricky. So, I'm not sure why that isn't working. Let's try that again, see if it works. Just without changing. Ah, so it didn't like the fact I'd accelerate in the same turn. So now I can move through, but I need to accelerate once to get some movement points. Um, it's actually allowed me to do the hammerhead there maneuver, but it's actually used all the velocity up. So I'm at zero velocity now, so that's going to be really bad because that means I'll crash. So I need to at least gain one velocity, so I'm going to click on accelerate once and try it. So click on accelerate once and hit hammerhead. And it allows me to turn around. Let's try that again with uh, gaining altitude and it, sh it might not work. So accelerate, go up, go up. And maneuver into the hammerhead. Oh, it does work. So there we go. So I'm going to try that again. I'm going to go two points of acceleration. I'm going to go up three times. Oh, I only let me go up twice. So two points of acceleration. Go up two times. And do a hammerhead. The reason I'm gaining altitude is because I might crash. If I fail this roll, I'll drop altitudes. So a bit of a drum roll now. Still saying I haven't used all my velocity. hammerhead after accelerating so I'm just going to go accelerate one point and maneuver for the hammerhead click done and hopefully not crash so I've got uh, base type number of nine five for base pilot skill plus two for atmospheric operations minus one for um, being a fighter small craft plus three for the hammerhead maneuver Ah, it still doesn't let me do it. I've got to do, let's see, expend the velocity there. 
So it's tricky aerospace, it just sometimes things don't seem to work. Probably just going to be doing that wrong. So I'm just going to click accelerate one. And I'm going to try using all my acceleration points and then maneuvering at the end of that maneuver. I think that's what you have to do, you have to, you have to do the maneuver at the end. So you can click anywhere on the map and it will take you there, but it does grey them out. So I'm going to click on move and just say if I do hammerhead now. That won't let me. It might be what let me do the hammerhead maneuver because I'm only on velocity zero. So we can try bombing the um, Wolverine. You can actually bomb with two modes. You can bomb with high altitude uh, bombing, which can be done from any altitude, although it gets harder the higher you go. But that, these bombs, they target hexes, not mechs, or not units. So I'm going to accelerate twice to give myself two. I find that two is quite a good number for getting to when you're doing accelerations. I'm going to go up as well, up two. So let's do that again. Accelerate, accelerate, go up, go up. I'm in green so I can change direction there. Let's get to uh, yellow and let's change direction. I've run out of frost points, it won't let me accelerate anymore. Oh, my maximum frost has been cut by two because of the bombs. That's why I've got uh, a, a maximum uh, frost uh, reduced. So I would normally be um, six, nine, and it's taken me to four, six because I've got two bombs. So I was wondering why that's happening. That's why. So let's do that again. Accelerate twice and go up twice. And want to get some height. So dive bombing costs you uh, two levels of height and just attacks one hex, whereas high altitude bombing is like strafing. You can attack five hexes in a row, uh, targeting any number of bombs in those, and then you need to make a target number modified by your height. So if you're at altitude 10, it costs you plus, it takes a plus 10 to hit. But remember, it's plus 10 to hit at minus 4 because it's stationary. Because you're only doing the target. And they scatter as well. So they scatter in 1d6 hexes. So I've used all my movement. Let's move. I think... Um, the reason why the Wolverine might not fire at me is because Princess really doesn't know how to deal with aerospace fighters. And so it's really only when you're doing PvP player versus player that you find that uh, you can get this to work correctly. So I'm going to loop around and I'm going to drop a bomb on his head. So I'm going to hit, I've gone down to velocity 1, so I'm going to accelerate 1, so I'm at velocity 2. Into the green. Here, I'm into the green again, I can turn, fly over his head, and again, don't have to end in his hex, you just fly over him, and you'll just basically swoop down at that point. So 
click on move now I can select him I can do target and I'm not targeting the unit I'm targeting the hex with bombs so you've got hex clear which just means attacking the uh, doing a strike mission but we're going to do bomb and you don't have to actually click an option to say bomb you just basically then select the bomb and you can select as many bombs as you want and you have to click dive bomb okay and your altitude bomb there as well so we're going to click dive bomb altitude bomb is how many um, bombs you want to drop um, I'm going to click fire and now we can choose number of bombs now this can get really messy so let's just do two and then I can have a go at doing the um, altitude bomb afterwards So bombing attacks there, you can see I've made the attack and it's attacked the hex, so it's at minus four to hit because it's attacking the hex. But the actual, um, so it's minus four to hit because you're attacking the hex, uh, but you get a plus modifier for bombing, which you can't remember, it's, it's plus two for bombing. So you use four plus two minus four, so you only need twos to hit uh, the hex. Um, oh, dive bombing might need more, um, but uh, I think dive bombing might be targeting the actual mech, so you actually need you need fours uh, plus two for bombing, which is six. I think it's carpet bombing that you you target the hex, so it hits the intended hex 0806, okay, and does the high explosive damage there, split into five damage increments. So let's uh, circle around again. You see my movement's changed now. I've gained a point because I've lost some of the bombs. I can't remember what the calculation is now for how much uh, the bombs slow you down. I'm going to gain some altitude as well. So I'm going to accelerate one and go up by two to get me to Four. I've lost two levels of height because of dive bombing. Oh, clicked on something I didn't mean to there. Let's do that again. You don't have to click on one hex at a time. If you know exactly where you're going, you can just click and it'll work it out. But if you want some fine precision flying, then it's easier to look at the numbers as you're flying. You can work out exactly when you can turn safely. So at this point what's happened is I've spent frost in ex uh, exceeding current SI current structure integrity and so the, the safe thrust is going to be the, the value of your, your base thrust which is six and I've spent um, how many thrust points? I've spent seven thrust points so let's see how that goes but five plus two minus one is uh, six so if I uh, fail this I'm going to face a control roll and obviously I'm still there so I must have passed if I failed the control roll, two things could happen. One, uh, or three things could happen. One, I lose 1d6 levels of uh, altitude. So if I hit zero, I crash. Two, uh, next turn, I can't make any movement or spend any thrust, and I carry on moving uh, in the direction I uh, was previously going, which might mean you fly off the map and you, you can fly back on. Or And three, if you fail it by five, you actually randomly change... Um, 
that you actually randomly change facing and go into a flat spin. And it can actually move move hexes around. Ah, so I did go out of control. And I've lost three levels of elevation, so I did I did, I did fail. So lucky I didn't didn't crash. Um, so now we'll see what happens when we're out of control. So now it'll actually say control. Here we go, and now I can't do anything. When I do in control, out of control, I can't do anything until the end of the turn. So there's no point hitting anything here because you're just going to carry on. Luckily, I've got one velocity. If I didn't have one velocity, if I was at zero, I'd lose one at the end of the turn, and then I'd stall and crash into the ground. And I've gone down to altitude one. So let's just click done. And I'm just going to go 16 forward. So in this case, it's flown me off the map, but it hasn't flown me back on. So that's a one problem with, with this. It doesn't seem to fly me back on when I fly off and I'm out of control. I think if I fly off on my own, it does. So I'm going to just quickly relaunch this. So going out of control is really, really bad for aerospace fighters. Uh, worst thing you can have happen because not only are you going to lose 1d6 levels of altitude, which means quite possibly you're going to crash, uh, you are going to um, you're going to crash, but you, you 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 can just fly off the map like that. So we're going to go to pick our fighter again. Let's just pick uh, the Corsair again. Can't spell. There you go. Let's add again an enemy unit. Let's pick something slow. And let's load on. We're going to start at height five, and we're going to deploy with many bombs as we can. Let's, let's choose 10. See how much that slows us down. And then we're going to give that Annihilator to Princess. Select a nice big map. And punch it. So I don't know if you deploy already. Ah, oh, there he is. So let's deploy nearby. Okay, so you can see my movement there is still 4.6. So I can still carry that number of bombs and still move a reasonable amount. And he's moved already. So let's have a go at bombing him. And we're going to do a uh, altitude bomb. And the altitude bomb you can do from, from any height. Uh, but um, the higher you do, the higher the more the target number modifier. But remember you are getting a minus four anyway, so if it's target number four minus four, you can bomb from altitude uh, four and, and hit on a four, or altitude six and hit on a six. Uh, so that's not too bad. So we're on altitude five at the moment, so we're gonna stay on altitude. 
at velocity zero, so let's hit accelerate twice to get two thrust points to be at velocity um, velocity of um, two. And again, if you go velocity three, it makes turning much more difficult. Work out where I need to go. There we go, and then I can just click over. I've spent uh, two thrust points. I'm going to spend another two thrust points changing. Um, I'll spend another one thrust point changing direction. While in the yellow. I want eight now. I can spend another thrust point. I'll run out of movement. I'm 32. Okay, so. Let's do the move. Okay, so I've crossed over him. Now I'm going to select the target, select bomb the hex, and I'm going to use the altitude bomb. So with the altitude bomb here, I need to select that many hexes, I think, to do this. So let's just target that guy again. How many bombs do you wish to drop? Two. Because there's um, five hexes you have to uh, target, you can only you have to drop an equal number in each, in each hex. I'm going to drop two in each hex. So, if I click done now, I'm not sure it'll work. No. What does it? Oh, it does work. So, usually you, you could only hit, in, in normal rules, I think you have to basically bomb all five hexes. Um, but in this case, we've just gone over one. Now, he's shot at me with an LBX, and uh, you can see he's done a lot better job than the other one. And he needed a six to hit because he's using cluster ammo, which is a minus three, I think, because it's minus one for cluster ammo, minus two because it's a flak effect. And you can see the altitude bomb needed nine, rolled it roll seven. So it needs nine because of. I'm not too sure where it needed nine actually. Maybe because I went over thrust and I was going faster uh, than I needed to. But it should be target number four minus four for um, being stationary, uh, being at the ground, plus two for bombing, which is two, and plus um, five, which is seven. And I guess the last plus two actually is because uh, I've moved, I'm moving so uh, fast. So that's the last thing to show, really. The. Um, Maneuvers I've never really got the hang of, as far as using them. Um, some of them seem to work better than others. But you've got to have a look at that table to really understand how they work. Um, the side slip's a lot easier. Side slip, you can just uh, move one hex across. That's only a, um, a patrol modifier of zero. So that's quite useful if you just need to move one over to, to target something. Uh, barrel roll is not really that useful. It just rotates you 360 degrees um, around to end in the same facing, uh, and you lose one point of velocity. Um, and half roll is useful in more in space where you want to basically present a different side uh, for your opponent to target. So you end up flying upside down, so doing inversion. And then uh, Hammerhead was the really hard one. In split S, uh, the unit loses two altitude and ends the movement facing any hex sign, but the velocity increases by one. But you need to be at uh, a velocity of... Um, oh, you can do velocity of any to do that. So if you try that, let's have a go. If I accelerate, I'm on velocity one at the moment. If I accelerate two... And do our maneuver. Split S. 
and then select the facing. It might let me do this. Let's see if it works. No, it still says I need to use all my velocity. Never quite understood understand how that works. Maybe because I don't need to pre press the accelerate. Maybe I can just hit move. Just hit maneuver and split S. Ah, so I've done split S, and then I can move off. So that worked. So again, it really takes a while to turn around anywhere in aerospace. See, I've made the split S. There you go. Needs an eight. Um, five plus two for being an atmosphere, minus one for small fighter, plus two modifier for a split S. And this could go spectacularly wrong. Let's see if it works. Maneuver successful, rod 11. If the maneuver fails, you just carry on in the direction you were traveling. You don't actually do the maneuver. So some of these maneuvers are really high. So having a really good piloting skill is quite good. So that's about it for the options. Uh, and they've just been shot up me a bit more. Um, so now because I've taken 20 points of damage, um, I have to make one control roll. and we've crashed. So uh, we've lost four levels of elevation. Um, and we lost some elevation because uh, uh, the velocity dropped because of the MLN. That's why I needed to add another couple of accelerations so the velocity dropped to zero. So I think I uh, just, just crashed there because of the drop in velocity. So a little bit hard looks. Uh, it really takes a little bit of practice to get flying but some of the basic ones are quite useful. I've actually managed to survive that. He didn't actually die. He's actually grounded, I think. He's at uh, altitude zero. So he actually survived. Amazing. Any uh, landing you can walk away from. So until next time, um, fly safe.